Price action is undoubtedly one of the most profitable trading strategies when it comes to the forest industry. This doesn't mean other strategies are not profitable, but then the reason why price action seems to be more profitable is because it's very easy for everyone at all to get along, provided I give it the time and attention. But then most people often get price action wrong when they try to implement it with other strategy, often making it more complicated. So in this particular video, I'm going to break down to you every single thing you need to follow to actually trade price action profitably. So I'm personally going to take you through on my laptop, giving you the procedures I follow when I'm analyzing market with price action, how I get my entries and how I get my stop loss to make sure that I'm making the maximum profit or making an accepted loss in the market. Because when it comes to forest or crypto or any market you are trading, there's always profit and loss. So whether you are trading the best strategy, which is price action, you are trading under strategy like ICT, smart money concept. The main thing here is that you are going to make profit, you are going to make loss. And then the most important thing is simply the ratio of profit you make to that of your loss will actually determine your fit in the industry. So hello guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. On this channel, I mainly focus on how you and I can actually make money through crypto forest and stock trading so if you are a crypto forest or stock trader who is actually looking for a strategy that will work for you a well tested and approved strategy then this is one of the best channels that you should consider smashing on that subscribe button to and turn on the bell notification because i upload videos and also do some live streaming week in week out to actually help you navigate the market better so without taking much of your time let's get straight on my computer let me share with you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can implement price actions and how you can actually use it to make profit from the market whether you are trading on a smaller time frame or on a higher time frame it doesn't really matter so without taking much of your time let's get straight on my computer so hello guys as i said i'll be sharing with you a simple price action strategy that anyone at all can actually use to actually start trading their forex crypto or stock market so now i'll be using a buy replace system to actually show you how this thing works and i'll be using a lower time frame which is a 4 hour uh, 30 minute and a 10 minute to actually do the illustration for you however this strategy works on every single time frame at all that you actually pick and for this particular video i won't be using my regular gbp jpy that i often use i'll be using nasdaq for this which is known as a us 100 for this particular tutorial so now my strategy my price action strategy is very simple it's a mixture of um support and resistance and market duration which is a trend line duration and a break of structure that is simply how my uh price action strategy is i simply follow these simple rules to actually get my trading set up and then trade them so now first of all when i'm over in my chart the first thing i will do is that i will identify a key resistance area so i will identify a key resistance area which is this area over here at the top now make sure i bring it together so i normally identify the key area so when i'm doing my analytics here is the thing i normally uh mark at my key areas on a very high time frame so if i'm going to the trade meaning i want to hold a trade throughout this day i'll be using the four hour as the highest time frame in my chart but then if i'm looking forward to hold a trade for let me say a few minutes or two maybe three hours four hours or below i'll use the one uh 45 minute or 30 minute at my as my higher time frame so one thing about when it comes over to trading that the time frame you pick actually matters and decide how and actually detect how you see the market so one advice i will give to you is that if you want to start analyzing know the kind of trade you want to place if you want to place a trade you want to hold within a few hours then you can use a more much more lower time frame but if you want to use if you want to uh, place a trade you hold for a longer time then you can go for a much more higher time frame so now that aside i pick my time frame which is the four hours 30 minutes and then 10 minutes for this particular tutorial so after this i'll mark out my key support also this is support one and then i'll consider here as support two as well which i'll also be looking for to get out of the market if i should place any trade so now on this particular higher time frame i'm not really after looking out for entry position i'm after marking the areas in which i want to trade so now from these areas that i've marked my main focus of trading is that i want to trade from either here to here or i'm trading from here to here so this is the place that i've marked in my mind so when i mark that my areas like this i'm simply looking for areas where i can actually get opportunity to trade within those zones because i don't want to hold a trade for too long so i'm looking for the market to move within those areas so after that i'm just going to clean this off and so after marking this up on a higher time frame the next thing i actually look out for is that you can see here is a minor area so i also mark these minor areas so for these minor areas, I often use something like this to mark them out as a minor area in the market, which I, will, I might even delete when I go down to a lower time frame. So after this, I'll come back to the 30-minute time frame. 
to actually see how the market is doing now. And over here on the 30 minute time frame, you can see that we can clearly see that we are not uh, seeing those areas we marked earlier on. So personally, I'll be using the 10 minute as my entry trigger. So I'll be marking under new areas. So this is what I simply do. I simply mark at these areas on every single time frame, the highest uh, time frame I'm actually going to use to actually help me get a better view of the market and decide where I'm going to place my orders in the market. So after this, now I'll get this like this. So you can see that this area we marked on earlier on where I use the um, yellow line here. You can see that it's of high use over here. So now after this, now you can see that we've gotten a new area we can trade from. So this one, because I want to hold a very short trade, so I'm using a very lower time frame so that I can get a max, a big move within a short period of time. So after this, now now I'll come over to the 10 minute itself where I want to get my entry. This way I'll make use of trend lines or any other thing that actually comes into my mind. So over here, now one thing I can notice is that you can see that the market was heading downwards. So first thing you can identify that the market was coming downwards and then it's eventually got broken because the trend line didn't move on successfully. So this one, you can see that this is a fade trend line. So I'll just ignore this one as a fade trend line. Now the next thing you can see, you can actually pay attention to in this particular market is that you can see that the market is on an upward movement. One, two, three. The market has three successful touches around this area here. So this one here like this, I'm going to consider it here. Or you can decide to take it from here, which can also be considered as well. So from here, like I said, the market has some decent touches. You can see there's a touch here. And then duplicate. Despite being weak, touching it, one thing I always, I always take to note is that as long as there's a touch and a rejection, I see that it's a high valued area. So I do mark it along. You can see. Now, this one, now we've got some good touches in this area. We can clearly see that the market is moving upward. Now, here is the thing. The trend is moving upward doesn't mean you should always place a buy order. Or the trend is moving downwards doesn't mean you should always place a down order. This is what you're actually going to learn during this uh, particular process. So, now, another thing I'll mark out from here is that since you met the market like this, you don't know which direction exactly the market is planning to go. Meaning, the market can choose to buy or it can choose to sell at this position but then you are a short time trader so you are looking for an opportunity to actually enter so from here now i'm going to mark another area as well in the market starting from this home place as well i'm also going to get somewhere like this so i'm going to get something like this so now the reason why i did this is that i want to get touches at both sides so from here we can see that this uh ladder keep going upward so now i have my entry plan here already now, the entries I have here in this market is that I'm waiting for this one to break. So if this market should break out of this upper line here, I'm going to place a buy order from here. So I'll place a buy order from here, keep my stop loss below the second line, and then my take profit over here. That is if the market should break out of here. But then in case the market doesn't break out of here, then I'll be looking for the market to break below the second line. Then I'm going to place a sell order after some few candles that actually shows that the market has decided to sell so now with this in mind now the next thing i'll do is that i will not hit on the bar replay since i'm using a back testing tool i will just hit on the bar replay to actually see how it goes so now let's see how it goes so let's see okay you can see that the market has failed to actually uh break above you can see there is no sort of upward movement in the market again because the market has broken out of here so now that the market has broken out of here, I'll just enlarge this like this. And then I will use the previous uh, lowest point as my entry trigger. So which is this point here, I'll mark it out like this. So if the market should still come below it, then I'll be looking for an opportunity to actually place a sell order. So if the market comes below here, then I'm going to sell it immediately. So now let's see what happens. So now I can see that the market has broken below. So since it has given me this below uh break here, I'm actually going to sell from here immediately. So from that now, I'm just going to put my sell order here. My stop loss, I'll be using this um trend line here. So I'll keep it inside here like this. And then my take profit, I'll use this place as take profit one. So now let me make it really bold for you to see. So here is my take profit one. Let me give it a white color. And then I'm going to duplicate it, clone. And then here will be my take profit too. So now let's see how this market actually goes. So now from here now, I'm just going to put on a high replay. 
So let me just put on the 10s replay and let's see how fast the market actually moves. So if you notice one thing in the market, you can see that the market immediately the market broke out of it, it came back to retest this area again. So now let me explain every single thing I just did in this market right now for you to understand how I came up with this particular strategy. This particular strategy is a form of price action, but a very simple price action strategy that is not that complicated. The first thing is that you, you use the highest time frame in your trading session to actually mark it out. And for me, I'm a day trader, so I'm looking for, and I was interested in the shorter time trade. So I use a four hour as my highest time frame to mark my support and resistance level. After which I went down to the 30 minutes, also mark support and resistance level and identify the market direction within the 30 minute range. And after identifying the 30 minute range, I went straight to the 10 minutes and then on the 10 minutes, I was able to come up with some uh, short, short trend line. I drew these trend lines and I identified the market direction and had two session buyers. One of them is waiting for the market to break above the top part of the trend and then I'm going to place the buy order. Or secondly, I'm waiting for the market to break below the um, to break below the second trend line, which is the one coming from the under and then I'm going to place a sell order so when you have two sort of trend line like this or people call it channel this and that so for me i often see them as a uh, market bias identifier simply easy to identify the market bias so if i had gotten a rejection at this point back to the upside before i would have placed a buy order but since i got it below over here and that's why i'm placing a sell order and now here's one thing to notice don't just rush and place a sell order the moment it break out of here. If you notice what I did, when it broke out, I did not rush to place a sell order. I patiently marked at the previous lowest point in the market, like this area whereby the market got to this top trend and then pushed back a little bit. I would then use that uh, re uh, pull back as my lowest point in the market and then I'll mark it out. So until the market break that particular area, it hasn't broken the uptrend, so I'm not going to get into the market. Until it breaks out of there, it shows that, okay, it has broken the uptrend, and then at the same time, breaking the trend line before I'm going to place my order. And that's exactly what I did in this market. So now from here, now let's see if it actually gets to our take profit too as well. So you can see the market eventually get to our take profit too. And then this order was placed on, um, let me say, 6 a.m. And then was closed around 9 p.m. the same day. So this actually make it very fast and simple because it uh from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. I mean 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. which is a pretty much three hours trade. That's a little bit. I was looking for an hourly head trade. So this isn't bad either for that. So now this is simply how I come up with this simple strategy. It's nothing complicated, it's just a straightforward thing that everyone at all can do. All you simply have to do is that take your time, watch this video carefully, as I said in the intro, watch this video to the very end. And then gets to implement every single thing I did in this market. So now once more, let's try playing it up again and see if we can also use it again to win another trade. So when I'm looking for opportunities, when I'm backtesting, I use a lower time frame. I use a lower speed, which is a 10, I mean a one second per bar. So from here, I can see that here looks like a good support area, which you can't really consider it. But then let's see if we can get any sort of uh, session, any sort of bias here to actually place an order. So for that, one thing I'll do is that I'll first of all mark at this area whereby the market shows to come down, which is from here. I'll get it out like this with another line here. So now let me give this line a bit thicker so you can see. You can see this another line here. Let me give it a yellow. So now another thing I'll do is that if this market should break out of this line here and I'm going to buy it, but if it doesn't, I'm going to ignore the market. So for that, let me just get um a little line here as well to look like a second support area. So now from here, now since I'm on a lower time frame, so here is the thing. This simple strategy, I'm using it on a lower time frame, doesn't mean it doesn't apply to the higher time frame. It also applies to the higher time frame. However, the reason I'm using a lower time frame is that I was more interested in a very lower move. And if you've been following my channel, you know that I use more of a lower time frame for my analytics. So for this, let's play it and see what it does from here. Okay, so we are watching right now. Let's see if it will actually break out of it. If it does break out of it, then we can place a buy order. So it has broken out of it, but let's see how it goes. We can't be really assured yet. Okay. So from here, like I said, the market has successfully broken out of it. But then, if you want to place an order here right now, let me say you want to place an order here. Then you'll be looking to place a buy order here like this. With your stop loss below here, your take profit definitely at this point here isn't really a good trade. So for this now, the only time I'm going to place an order is I'll wait for this market to fall back in here. If it doesn't, then I'll let this opportunity go. So one thing you need to know is that not every opportunity worth taking 
And before you place any order, this is one thing I always want a lot of people. Before you consider placing any sort of order in the market, first of all, ask yourself, where am I going to put my stop loss? Where am I going to put my take profit? If you know that you are not getting a good result here, then get then there's no need in actually placing the trade. So in case you don't know how to place a good stop loss, you can go watch that my other video that will be tagged in this video description to actually show you every single thing you need to know about placing stop loss. So now I've taught you one particular key part of uh, price action that you can implement while trading. Now let me show you another one again at the point the market is. So now from here you can see that if we had placed this order before, we would have still made a good amount of profit despite we not getting a good stop loss position. But then I won't advise it. The most important thing is that get a good stop loss position to guide your trade and maintain your risk management system. So from here you can see that the market has retested this um top resistance area here. So now I'm about to show you a different price action technique as well. You can see that the market has successfully re retested this top resistance area here. Let me mark it for you. So now let me mark it out for you. You can see this was a very high point in the market. Sorry. This was a very high point. And now you can see that the market is also back to that place again. So now from here now, since I've seen this upward week here, I'll be looking for a sell order from this place. So now, the reason why I'll be interested in a sell order from this point is that the market is at a key resistance level on the particular time frame I'm trading. This will always warn you. If you are trading, use that particular time frame. So since I'm using a 10-minute time frame, I won't be considered about the resistance I drew at the top here. I won't be considered about the resistance I drew um on the 4-hour time frame or something. I'm more concerned about what I'm seeing on that 10-minute time frame right now because that's what I want to use to place my orders. So if you are placing an order and you're using a 15-minute to place your order, make sure that whatever bias you are using should be based on that 15-minute session. It shouldn't be anything out of that 15 minutes. This is one thing a lot of you do. You use uh, maybe uh, four hours to do your analytics and then you come and place orders in a 15-minute time frame and then expecting the move to appear in the four hour directly. Well, it will happen like that. There are so many candles of the 15 minutes that actually add up to form the four hours. So when you place, when you are doing your analytics, the time frame you use to place your order should be the time frame, the time frame you use to judge your trade as well. So for me right now, I'm placing my orders in the 15, in the 10 minutes. So every single thing I'm doing right now, I'm only considering what is happening on a 10 minute time frame. I'm not considering any other thing. The reason why I drew this other uh, spots in the market is mainly to use them as my take profit and stop loss positions because they are also key levels in the market. So I mainly drew them for take profit or stop loss purposes just to guide my trade and keep it safe. Apart from that, they are of no use to me. The time frame that I'm actually using to judge my key levels for entry and exit will mainly be on the 10 minute that I'm trading with. These other higher ones are for external trades. So now from here right now, let's see, once I get a bearish candle from here, the reason why I'll use uh, the next bearish candle that will come from here is that you can see the market try pushing upward and they immediately get to this resistance area here. It gives us this long week on top and a long week below with uh, a bullish uh, tiny body in here, which is, is an indecision candle. So once I see indecision candles like this and then I see an, and I see um, a next comic candle, which is uh, very strong then I'm fond of trading with that candle as well. It's a very, uh, I would say it's a very easy kind of strategy that anyone at all can implement. All you simply have to do is that know the psychology behind it and that's simply all. So from here, now let me just hit on play button and see what happens. So from here, you can see I had this uh, very big uh, bearish rejection candle here. You can see the candle here. Very big bearish rejection candle, which is it's a good sign to actually place a sell order. So now from here, now I'm just going to place my sell order immediately. So now here's one thing I do. When I see opportunity to place orders, I don't stay back and then be saying, oh, I'm looking for this opportunity to place my order. I'm looking for this to place my order. No, I don't do that. Once I see a good opportunity to place an order, I make sure I get it immediately and then get out of the market also. So most people will say, okay, let me wait for the next candle. Let me wait for the third candle. Let me wait for the fourth candle. All those candles you are waiting for won't actually come out. And if they come, maybe they might be driving close to your take profit position. So when I'm using the lower time frame, I'm fond of grabbing every single opportunity because one thing about the lower time frame is that candles often imitate themselves. So if there's a bearish candle, there's still another unlikely to come because more of them need to reflect on a higher time frame. So they need to accumulate on a lower time frame first. So now this totally depends on the strategy you are trading. So for example, if I wanted to trade breakout and retest, 
I will be waiting for the market to break from here and then come back to retest the bed. For this particular one, I'm not trading breakouts and retest. I'm simply looking at where the market is breaking structures or respecting previous structures to trade. Like for our first trade, the market respected, I mean, the market broke out of a trend line and then we got into it immediately. And for this particular trade we are, I'm about to take right now, the market did what? The market respected a key level. So that's why I'm about to trade it again. So from here now, as usual, I look for one is to two and I get a good stop loss position, which is here, which is pretty much okay for a stop loss. So after here now, keep my take profit some pips below this previous area here. And then let's see what actually happens. So you can see we got it immediately as well. So now here's one thing I'm going to tell you in this market. You see how I'm getting that from the buy replay? In most cases, it's not really like this. You have you might lose at times, you might make profit at times, but the most key thing in the market is how you actually treat them, how you get your entries will actually determine if you are going to make profit or not. So for example, now based on the strategy I taught you, let me delete this one off. Let me just move it aside. So now, based on the strategy I taught you, let me show you something over here. So let me just delete this one off. Delete this one off and I'll show you something here. So now, based on the strategy I taught you, you can see that there is what the market came to retest this previous support area that we drew and then bounce off it immediately. So now, based on my strategy, I taught you what will you do? You place a buy order here immediately, right? So now, let's place a buy order here and also see what happens if it actually works or not, if it will work at this point or not. Because one thing is that there's no high win, there's no golden win rate strategy, every single strategy out there. It gives you wins and it gives you loss. At the end of the day, how you control either of those will actually determine how the strategy work out for you. So now let me also play this and see how it goes. You can see this time around we lost out. So now this will tell you that the strategy is not a good mind for always winning. It's simply a strategy whereby you win some, you lose some, just like every other strategy out there. But then one thing I advise is that it's a very cool strategy if you work yourself around it perf perfectly. So now for this one, now if you look at our first two trades, it went on. Uh, very well and then we lost on this particular one so now let's say if we had risked uh let me say we risked 100 dollar to 337 dollar here meaning we made a profit of 337 dollar we risked under 100 dollar here for 254 dollars so that is a total of let me get my calculator so calculator and then let me get it out here so now the first one we made 337 dollar Second one plus two fifty four, and then over here we lost hundred so minus hundred, so we we'll end up with four hundred ninety one profit at the end of the day. So this is a pretty much good strategy. But remember one thing I told you: always follow the rules of the strategy. Once you see a good uh sort of sort of rejection, you can gladly get into the market if it doesn't go your way it's normal but if it goes your way as well it's also normal so at the end of the day there's no holy grail when it comes to trading the most key important thing is that you see understanding the system you are trading and then following it like for example you see over here over even over here that the market broke the trend line at times the market may break this trend line like this break this low here break this low here and then at this point here it might reverse back upward again and not get into your a good uh, profit opportunity for you. So at the end of the day is that it's having a particular strategy and they keep trading that strategy over and over again to see how it actually works so that you also implement it. So days that it doesn't work, you know that, okay, that isn't just your day. It's not that the market is against you or something, but it's just that that isn't your profit day yet. So what do you do? You let the market play its own part. So this is simply all I want to share. This is a simple price action strategy that you can use for any time frame at all, any market at all, whether crypto, forex, um stock anyone at all that you actually you actually want to is very much simple as well so now here's the things you need to note first of all use the highest time frame in the particular session you want to trade for your analytics and then go down to the lower time frame which is very close to that one and then look out for any other key levels you want to mark and then now go down to the particular time frame you want to use to place your order and then do your overall analytics on that particular time frame your entry your exit and all of them should be based on that particular time frame so now that is simply the three things here so you can use trend lines to identify your entries to give you your entry bias or you can use um 
maybe support and resistant level like the one I did over here. I use trend line to actually get my entry bias. Over here, I use support and resistance to get my entry bias. Over here, I use the support area as a key level. And then this uh, long week rejection here as my key level. But then at the end of the day, ma the market went against me. So it's all normal. It's all part of the market. So that's already said. Hope you are you are able to learn something from this market to actually implement in your own trading as well. So in my next coming video, I'll be more focused on creating a full section on how you can actually trade trend line in specific to make more profit from the market. So with that already said, have a nice day. Bye.